What's up everybody, Gundam Flexing here, and in this video we're going to be checking out the recently completed real grade MS-06F Zaku 2. This guy came out in 2011 and I hate to say it, but that's pretty much how long he's been in my backlog. And the reason being is because I bought this kit and the RX-78 real grade at the same time, but I built the RX-78 first. And for me, it wasn't a very pleasant experience. There were a lot of loose pieces, specifically around the skirt, and I had a lot of issues with the uh, decal sheets. So when I came into this, when I finished this, I have to say it is a pleasant surprise. This wasn't too bad, it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be, and it's something that I thought was really, really cool, especially with the shades of green and the weapon systems. I have to say that the real grade weapon systems are something to behold of. I really enjoy building them and I wish a lot of high grades would sort of follow the designs. Anyways, the real grade Zaku 2 uh, has a lot of great things about it. Again, the color scheme is phenomenal, the weapon system is great, and he has incredible flexibility. And finally, he does come with a myriad of decals. But again, sort of like the RX-78, there were a lot of pieces that were a little bit too loose. Uh, my RX-78, when I built it, I put it on my display stand, and which was like a feet above the table, and he fell onto the table, shattered into a trillion pieces, and I thought to myself, okay, that's it, that's enough. But again, the RX-78 was something that was just, just a bad experience for me. Now the Zaku 2. Before we go into the model we see in front of you, we're going to go over all the extra periphery items and include the decals and all the hands and one of the runners. So without further delay, here is the first thing, the decal sheet. Now I noticed that the RX-78 uh, had a decal sheet similar to this. However, when I put all the decals, I noticed several days later that they started to furl and just started coming off. So you actually 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 have to add, excuse me, you actually have to add uh, a little bit of adhesive. So when adding decals to the Zaku 2, I kept it as simple as I could. I uh, included the nomenclature here, GF Gundam Flexing, and then the number one, Gundam Flexing 1. And of course you've got to use the Xeon emblems. And the ones I used, what's right here for his uh, shield and a couple ones right here for his backpack. And as you can see, I left the ones, the stripes alone. Now, when I went online, uh, the real grades, for the people that did add the stripes and pretty much almost just littered their entire uh, Zaku with all the decals, I have to say it looks incredible. But again, I don't want to do it because in the future, I know the, the adhesive may start coming off and you're just going to have to apply some more. Right here is the bronze pieces. The bronze pieces I think would look incredible on the real grade Zaku 2, but on the RX-78, again, I noticed that a lot of them started peeling. And from my experience, if I recalled correctly, when I put these on specifically on the elbows and on the knee joints, um, if you keep on trying to move it around, the bronze will actually start to come off, like the actual brown portion would come off the sticker and all you have left is the sticker. But here it is, here is the decal sheet. I kept mine to a minimum. One thing you want to be aware of is the stripes because the adhesive may not be as good and they may start curling. Now next is the hands. You pretty much have three pair of hands, so six total hands. And one thing to note is that the only real trigger hand is his right hand and that's the only hand that he really has to be able to hold his weapon systems. However, we do have a left and right hand piece like this where the joints are separated from the thumb to the index finger to the three fingers here. Now one thing you want to note is that even though you're able to grip a weapon system it won't be as tight as a hand that's specifically made for it. In addition this one well, you'll notice it got ball joints right here, 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 pretty much three. And if you keep popping them back out, whether it's by accident or whatever, if you keep popping them back out, popping them back in, popping it back out, popping it back in, you're actually going to start to warp the ball bearings and then the joints become very easy to come off. I'm talking about like a little push and it'll just totally come off. Another interesting thing here, if we look at the hands, specifically let's look at the fist hands, is the the green little cover hand uh, cover piece for his hands. You don't have enough cover pieces to cover all the hands, which I thought was a little bit strange. And on top of that, you'll notice here, you'll have like a little uh, bump, like a little square right there. 
And if I were to take off this piece right here, you'll notice it's different, right? And not all the green pieces for these hands fit to every single one of them, which I think is a little bit strange. So again, you don't have enough cover pieces for all the hands and there's only certain pieces for each of them. You have two closed fists, pretty much two manipulative hands, a one open hand, which is his left hand and the only real trigger hand is his right one. And now let's go into the weapon systems. Here's his Heat Hawk, which is very simple. Uh, this is pretty much one piece here, and then you have his blade, and as you can notice here, top of the handle, uh, I include an additional piece, and that is for his mount. You're able to mount this axe on the side of his skirt or on the back of his skirt. And the Heat Hawk is pretty much one of three weapon systems on this Zaku. If we look at his machine gun, and again, as I stated, I really like real grade weapons. Uh, to me, they're just super detailed, and I sort of wish a lot of high grades would adopt some of these features. So this is his machine gun. It comes in several pieces. We have his scope, which also has a transparent piece. Be careful, do not lose it. If it's gone, it's, it's gonna be gone forever. Here's his magazine clip. It could pop off and on. And if you wanted to be adventurous, you're also able to pop these things on the side of his skirt as well. And notice here is his other handle, and this is his real trigger hand, his only trigger hand. Now let's look at the bazooka. Again, incredible weapon. Comes in several pieces. Here's his trigger, and each triggers, or ex excuse me, uh, each pretty much like trigger well or whatever, fits very well into the trigger hand, and there is like a small piece for it to completely grab. Here is also the side of the, uh, for your grabbing, uh, for your grip. And here is your scope. And you'll notice here, the scope does come with the transparent piece. Again, you lose it, it's gone, it's gone forever. And now on to the Zaku 2. There's a lot of great things about it. There's a lot of poor things about it, but starting with the head, his head is pretty interesting. There's no issues in terms of, I guess, mobility. Uh, he has a mono eye and notice that this is a pink sticker. And one thing to notice is when you are building this, the mono eye fits very, very tightly into the piece it goes into. And once you lose that mono eye, that little small, small transparent piece, it's, it's pretty much gone forever. So the way I put it on was I just pretty much leaned it against the table and I pushed it in. Um, and pretty much tried to reduce the area where it could just shoot out randomly to. And here we have the piping system around his head. Now, if you've built the Master Grade Zaku 2, you'll know, remember that the piping was probably very, very annoying to do. However, the piping system for the real grade is actually very, very easy. Uh, all you had to do was use a pipe and everything was already lined up for you and you just slide it in, for example, right here. Or, or right here and you just slide it in and you could push them out and push out these small pieces basically and then slide them on the piping system and that was incredibly convenient very easy to make and that's something that I really did appreciate so again piping systems on his face to include his main body and legs they were very easy to apply and they look really great if you look at his chest You'll notice I am missing a small green piece and that was not done intentionally. Uh, this is the piece that's supposed to mirror this one. I think it just simply fell out because uh, there are a couple loose pieces on this one. So you may want to use cement. And of course I can't find it so it's, it's gone forever. One thing to note about this upper body is uh, pretty much he really can't twist too far left, too far right because of the skirt right here. Also, he really can't bend too far forward either, or too far back. Um, so really, if you're going to pose him, the only real direction is, is forward. If we look at the back, we can see the piping system goes all the way up here. Here, we have his little cool boosters right here, and they are mobile. They can go up and down. And if I could recall correctly, the ones on the RX-78, his backpack, it was like on a very small ball joint and those things popped out like incredibly easy. But this one does not. If we look at his arms, you see his awesome spike shield and his awesome shield right here, GF1, Gundam Flexing 1. Here's the emblem I decided to use. 
and uh, his arms. He has great flexibility in his arms. And one thing to note, I thought it wasn't supposed to be like this, but it, it is. I did check online and looking at the pictures, is that when his arms are straight, the piece is closed, but when you bend it, the piece is open like this. And that is intentional. So look at his hands. And this is the second portion of his joint hand. One thing to note is that when I built this, you have these little pieces that go under the cover under over his wrists or whatever. And these do not fit well in here. And matter of fact, the instructions made it look like they pop in. I tried popping them in. They do not pop in. So I simply took them off. You're supposed to attach your hands to these little, I guess, cuffs. And uh, yeah, they don't work. They come off very easily. Uh, it looks a little bit weird, especially if you start noticing that they just float over the hand. They do not go well in here, so I just took them both out and we'll never use them. We look at the skirt. The skirt is pretty interesting. It's a darker green than the rest of the body. One thing to note is the forward skirts here, especially this piece for me here, is on a ball joint and it comes off incredibly easy. And I mentioned this because if you were to take advantage of the flexibility of this guy's legs and try to put him in like a kneeling shooting position, you will pop off at least one of them. That, that's inevitable. The ball joint's very small and it's a not a tight fit in there. And also if you were to move his legs sideways, if you're not careful, you could also accidentally pop out the side skirts here too. So the skirt looks great, but the, I guess the stiffness in the joints, not so much. It's very easy for it to pop off. The side of the skirt here, you're able to mount his machine gun clip or his axe here, here, and of course, not the back, or you're able to mount the bazooka like that. And we go on to his legs, like the rest of his body, very detailed. Uh, a couple things to note. When you bend his legs, just like the arms, you do have a crease that opens up, and again, that is intentional right there. And just like his arms, he has incredible flexibility ranges like that, which is great, especially with this portion right here being so flexible and so sturdy that regardless of how you bend his legs, know that it will not pop off. How his leg is popped in is pretty much like that. I'm gonna go and take it out. You'll see the joint like this. Now with the RX-78, I did have a problem. I sort of wish these things were a little bit longer um, because they do come off a little bit easily if you keep on moving it back and forth. But yep, this is his legs, pretty cool. Thrusters right there, at the back of the legs, you're able to put the bronze little decals. Great flexibility in the knee, no issues there. And if we look at the legs, or excuse me, the feet, you do have a mobile feet that bends in three pieces, it's far in the back heel and in the toe, which is pretty cool. And he does have a great uh, ankle flexion all over. So yes, the Zaku 2 real grade was a pleasant surprise. I thought I was going to get PTSD when, uh, when I was building this because it was going to remind me of the RX-78. So again, because he really can't twist and turn, he could only face one direction, which is forward. But overall, and pleasantly surprised, very well happy with it. He has great weapon systems, a bazooka, heat hawk, and his classic machine gun, uh, Zaku machine gun. He comes with great hands, uh, a lot of hands, but just note that the ones with the extra joints do pop off very easily, especially if you keep popping them off. He only has one real trigger hand, which is his right hand, and he has one open hand, which is his left hand, and a pair of closed fists. Nothing too much to worry about except this missing piece here on his chest is going to annoy me to no end. Plus the little skirt portion, uh, I don't know how I'm going to fix that one. I'm going to find a way to just make it stick in there a little bit better. Overall, great build. I would definitely recommend it. I would recommend it more than the RX-78, that's for sure. And again, you have a great amount of decals, but be careful. They might furl and whatever. You have to add more adhesives to it. But that's all I have for this video, y'all. Hope you enjoy. Hope you found it informative. If you have any questions or comments, please post it down in the section below. As always, I appreciate you all for watching. Wash your hands. Stay safe. I'll see you next time. Peace out.